Hi, my name's Vin Sheehan and today I'd like to talk about Across the River and Into the Trees by Ernest Hemingway. And I'd like to explore um, the structure and themes of this novel, published in 1950. Now, if you were to explain what this novel is about, if you were to distill it into a sentence, I guess it would be something like a terminally ill American colonel's love affair with a much younger woman in Venice. The protagonist of the novel is Colonel Richard Cantwell. He's 50 years old and he is um, the veteran of both world wars. He fought with the Italians in World War I, the Americans in World War II. Most of the novel concerns that the colonel's his recent past and further back during two world wars. And the novel's book ended by this uh, duck shoot which takes place uh, in the present. Um, and actually just after we return to the duck shoot at the end of the novel, um, that's, that brings us, that's in the present as well. So we begin the novel with uh, Colonel Richard Cantwell uh, shooting ducks just outside Venice on the lagoon and it's an activity it's a, an activity he, he loves he clearly enjoys this he doesn't get on with the person who's take, taken him this Venetian boatman we find out why the boatman doesn't like him right at the end of the novel and then while he's shooting ducks the colonel thinks and daydreams and recalls um, recent events in Venice. We, in the second chapter we learn that uh, from a visit to the doctors that the colonel is terminally ill with a heart condition. He has to take medication. We're introduced to um, the colonel's uh, driver, this uh, soldier called Jackson. Uh, and the colonel doesn't always speak to him very, very warmly, let's put it like that. The colonel's a very kind of abrasive character He's quite likeable from a reader's point of view, but the other, from the other character's standpoint, except for Renata, who will come on to in a, in a bit, and some of his friends, he can come. He's quite a, uh, perhaps a difficult character. Anyway, uh, the Colonel, via this, these flashbacks, which form the bulk of the novel, we find out how Jackson has driven him uh, via the scene of uh, where the Colonel received um, a wound. Uh, on Italian soil, uh, he fi he's finally driven into Venice. And this is the city uh, the Colonel loves. He's, um, he feels at home in Venice. And uh, in Venice, um, Cantwell checks into the Hotel Gritti, uh, where his place he stays whenever he's in Venice. And uh, one of his uh, oldest friends is what's called the Grand Maestro. What he calls the Grand Maestro, he's like the uh, the hotel manager, and uh, they have this kind of mock brotherhood, and they uh, which they uh, kind of joke about people joining, etc. Seems to be a rather in joke between the two of them, and it's here that uh, we're introduced to Renata, who's this um, nineteen-year-old Venetian countess, a beauty who. Uh, who is desperately in love with the colonel and he is desperately in love with her. Um, she knows that he is poorly and that his time is limited. But uh, the, over the course of the bulk of the book, um, we're just, it just describes their, their love affair, how um, uh, she gives him emeralds, as as a gift which he more sees as a loan and he, he you know he vows to return them to her they have uh, this sexual encounter on a gondola the colonel um, receives a portrait of renata which he treasures and talks to when he's not in her presence and uh, renata seems fascinated in dick's past the colonel's past uh particularly his involvement in the wars and uh there's a lot of pain and uh, regret in uh, in in Colonel Cantwell's 
uh, recollections of conflicts he's been involved in. At some point he was demoted from being a general back to being a colonel. And uh, he's particularly um, traumatised by a battle in uh, during the Battle of Hurtgen Forest near the end of the Second World War between the, uh, the US uh, Army and, and the Germans. The, the colonel buys Renata a brooch in a jewellery shop she particularly likes. And um, and eventually uh, they bid farewell to each other. Um, he uh, needs to leave. He knows he's dying, and you know it's very much a case of he knows he's not going to see her again. And this is where Dick goes on his uh, his duck hunt. So the, the novel ends with this duck hunt, which you know, uh, which we see at the beginning, and. Um, and sure enough, after this uh, this shoot, this 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 shoot on the lagoon, uh, Dick's driven by Jackson out of the area towards Trieste, and uh, and Dick Colonel Richard Cantwell finally dies of uh, from these repeated heart attacks. And uh, just before he dies, he he quotes uh, Stonewall Jackson's last words, uh, from which the novel derives its name. No, no, let us cross over the river and rest under the shade of the trees. Uh, the colonel uh, ensuring that he dies well and in an ordered way. Um, so what are we to make of this novel? Um, it seems to divide people, this novel. It, it seems to be um, a lot of people out there, if, particularly if you look at online sites like Goodreads, people, many people just don't like it. Many people think it's great, um, and the reception has always been mixed. Um, it's got some interesting themes, uh, perhaps the most dominant one of course is death, and uh, that's echoed in Venice itself. It seems to be uh, a cold, beautifully decaying city around Dick and his, uh, and his lover Renata. Um, and I guess the, the, the shooting of the ducks at the beginning and end reinforced that message of uh, something beautiful, uh, something uh, wonderful, just um, something precious and lovely ending, I guess. So there's a lot of tragedy in this novel because you know early on he's dying. There's this melancholy about this novel. There's a lot about alcohol and food in it as well. Um, Hemingway's uh, favourite bar, Harry's Bar, features in it a lot. And, you know, much of it is autobiographical. Hemingway, of course, was infatuated with a much younger woman. And outside the, the, the doomed love of um, the Colonel and Renata, there's very much a sense of past traumas uh, coming, uh, becoming to bear on the present. Uh, PTSD, if you like. The Colonel seems haunted by uh, conflicts during the wars and uh, he's very matter of fact about the way he describes them going into perhaps you know cold hard details but nevertheless you feel there's a real heaviness and sadness behind the stories he retells uh, to Renata who seems fascinated by his stories. There's also a sense of um, the Colonel not being able to accept the love offered to him by Renata. Um, he can't accept these gifts and these emeralds, or even the portrait. At the end of the book, he, sa he has a note saying, you know, if he dies, he wants them sent back. He just uh, seems to struggle with the idea that he could be loved and that it's just a free gift. He, it seems that he, f he feels duty-bound to return something. And... Uh, he seems simultaneously touched and flattered and um, and joyful about the love Renata has for him, but also there's one of a deep sense of insecurity, uh, perhaps represented by his uh, his crippled hand, which is a result of a war wound, and kind of self self loathing in this character. So there are some deep themes in this novel. I have to say, I found some of the dialogue between the Colonel and Renata a bit cringe-inducing, shall we say. Um, 
there was a lot of tell me you love me, tell me you love me again, you know, and all this stuff, and which I found a little bit hard to take. Um, a bit cheesy, uh, didn't sit well with me. But there's absolute sublime lines in here as well. Um, perhaps encapsulating the iceberg theory, the technique of drawing those deep, that deep meaning out of the text through um, seemingly uh, innocuous superficial lines. I find this a very beautiful line here and I don't know why, it just touches me. Near the beginning of the book the Colonel is, um, is being driven by Jackson, they come across I think it's a, a cow or an oxen on the road and then just as they're approaching Venice he sees a sail and uh, the Colonel uh, thinks this why should it always move your heart to see a sail moving along through the country, the colonel thought. Why does it move my heart to see the great, slow, pale oxen? It must be the gait as well as the look of them, and the size and the colour. I just find that such a beautiful line about the oxen. Uh, it kind of somehow encapsulates the power, yet also the vulnerability of um, of a cow or an ox. I find that very touching, that line. So across the river and into the trees, um, a novel haunted by wound, love and death, but with some reservations I'd say this is uh, definitely worth reading. Thanks for watching. There's a brief slideshow about the structure and themes after. Thank you.